Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. This is Fabian Nicieza. Greetings, brother. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And I'm Andrew Sumner. Blessed to be talking to Fabian Nicieza. Doubly blessed because we're sure. about to... Yeah, come on, mate. Come on. For sure. We're, we're, we're about to uh, talk about the omnibus uh, re-edition, uh, um, re-editions? I don't know, that's, that's actually a word. Um, Re-releases, uh, omnibus editions of your uh, archive editions of, uh, I, I think, I, if I remember correctly from our previous conversations, maybe your favourite piece of comics work, which Among was, my uh, favourite pieces. Among your favourite pieces. Among my favourite. Um, your um, indelible run on Thunderbolts. Yes, indelible that no one remembers. <laughs> <laughs> trapped, trapped between Kurt Busiek launching it and Warren Ellis turning it into something it shouldn't have been. But other than that, yes, it, it, indelible. Um, I have written more Thunderbolts comics than anyone else on the planet, and I think most Thunderbolts readers don't know it. Um, but that's okay because <laughs> once I once Marvel sends me my omnibus, which should be any year now, um, I'm really I'm really looking forward to checking out those issues again because I haven't really looked at them very much in a long, long time. But uh, I I enjoyed writing that book tremendously because it's uh, it's everything I like about stupid fun superhero comics. Um, it, it's it's crunchy continuity goodness. It's ludicrous silliness stupidity. Uh, it, it it's agita and aggravation and conflict and and deep moral issues characters have to face. Um, it, I, it had everything that that anybody who grew up reading Marvel comics would relish getting the chance to write. Um, that plus I was blessed with a run of just really good artists, which makes my job tremendously easier and always makes me look better. Uh, starting with Mark Bagley, leading to Patrick Zerker, leading to Tom Grummet. Um, I, I had, uh, and Chris Batista was in there too, and Manuel Garcia. Um, I had a really, really good run of artists. So over the course of 75 issues, um, yeah, well. I, 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 um, I, I had some excellent storytellers and, and creative partners on the book. Um, and and I'm, I'm glad it all got collected. I'm glad, I think it's like, I think it's almost all me, almost all me, which I like. Um, I, 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 I just look forward to getting the chance to read it. If, if this, if this, air is before i've received my copy hopefully someone from marvel will look at it and go oh crap we forgot to send him his on the <laughs> yeah tom, <laughs> and the, Bre and tom brevo send me comes one. on the tom brevo yeah. comes on the show tom, almost tom, as yeah, much tom, as you do tom, mate, tom's, so, yeah. tom's shipping tom's gonna ship the books right out of his own office yeah. <laughs> tom, <laughs> tom's not so busy that he can't just package on the buy <laughs> himself that's <laughs> Hey, no, they got they got they got the, the they use Midtown Comics for their fulfillment and 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 they're really good. The packaging, the, the, everything is sent to you really care with great care. The problem is it just takes forever to get. It, it really does. Um, so so and, da so David and Gull at Midtown Comics, who I know both of those guys very well, lovely people. Get it oh, done. They're gonna, Come on. They're gonna you know. pawn no, they're gonna pawn it off on the warehouse in Brooklyn. They're not gonna take any <laughs> responsibility for it themselves. I just want to hear I want to hear like an old time like 30s movie with all the people in the in the newsroom all shouting to each other. We gotta get Fabian that on the bus. Let's get Fabian that on the bus now. Hurry up, everybody. Who's gonna get Fabian that on the bus? <laughs> and hey. then an image of me opening it up. Oh. <laughs> hey, let's, this... let's put it this way, Andy. By the time I get it. I'm going to be too old to be able to lift it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> if this if this conversation serves as nothing other than a timely advert for the fact that Fabian Nicieza needs his omnibus editions of want, Thunderbolts. I, do, I need because right following right up on that is the New Warriors Volume Two omnibus. I want that one too. So let's get going. Come on, let's send me my omnibus. <laughs> yeah, you, you you heard it here first. And, and before we go, for those. For those comics fans who managed to live under a rock for an entire generation, could you just familiarize everybody as to the premise of Thunderbolts? The, the premise of Thunderbolts was um, with most of Marvel's big heroes off Earth, Baron Zemo decided it was the perfect time to create a fake superhero team that the public would think was doing good but was secretly just part of his insidious plan to rule the world. So he gathered a bunch of former masters of evil, which 
just by the very name itself, you kind of know they got an agenda, right? Um, and and they all <laughs> they all came out with new personas. So Moonstone became Meteorite, you know, and and Screaming Mimi became Songbird, and the Beatle, multiple time loser, became Mock. Three, I think he started out as, or Mach Four. I don't even remember. We went through a few Mach, um, and, and and ultimately that that con game starts to turn on Zemo because some of the some of the former villains start to appreciate and respect the work they're doing as heroes, and they don't think they want to rule the world. They start to think that maybe doing good <laughs> is good, you know. Um, so there's the inevitable fracturing between the, the characters and Zemo, and they try to make it on their own. And they're always conflicted by their baser desires, often their lack of foresight, their lack of vision. They're, they're, they're villains who've made multiple mistakes. Why wouldn't they continue to make mistakes just because they're trying to be heroes? So the process of redemption, as it were, is 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 more than enough to have me write 75 issues and have Kurt write 34 <laughs> issues uh, before Warren Ellis turned it into a Marvel version of Suicide Squad, which is not what it should be. Um, so, so that that really is the, the crux and the gist of the story that, that I was telling. Um, villains who are trying to be heroes. Yeah, well said, mate. Uh, and and uh, work, work, work. Two volumes, uh, two omnibus volumes of Fabian's work have already been released. We're looking down the barrel of a third volume, which is coming out in February 2023, I believe. All three of those volumes can be ordered from these links down here, right down. Damn, they're still there, the links. The links haven't moved. They're, they're, always, right they're always here for you. And, and, and of course, and, and rolling into 2023, uh, next year we get the, I think it's next year we get it, is the MCU iteration of Thunderbolts. Which uh, which um, has got an interesting lineup. Nothing like the the villains masquerading as heroes thing, but I think it'll be interesting nonetheless. I think yeah, I'm a bit ambivalent about it, just because I like the actors and the characters a lot. I I'd prefer not to see them merged to the Thunderbolts name grafted uh, onto the merged would assume some sort of a symbiotic relationship. It's being grafted onto the Thunderbolts name, which I yeah. I don't really like. Um, not the least of which is because I think the Thunderbolts concept that Kurt, Kurt and Mark came up with was so strong, so so iconic, um, and so well remembered for for the twist that it took in its first issue and the multiple twists and turns it took throughout its run. That that I I, I honestly do feel like that the movie is unfairly using something that has its own strength and its own you know it, it, its own quality i would have much rather have preferred seeing multiple villains well introduced in the mcu that at some point would become the the fake new heroes even though the comic book audience would know what the conceit is and know what the, yeah. the secret is the mainstream movie audience wouldn't and to many of them it would still be pretty 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 wild um that's what I would have preferred to see, but instead, I think we're going to get a version of Warren Ellis' Thunderbolts, yeah, yeah, which, is, absolutely. which is really not what I'm interested in seeing. So, <laughs> and, and, it's, and essentially, the lineup, well, and it's all fantastic characters played by great actors. It, yep. It's essentially anti-heroes a go-go, isn't it? It's not villains yeah, per se. Yeah. yeah. And to not, well, I'm, I have a feeling that they, yes, they're absolutely going to use uh, Daniel Brühl as Zemo. Uh, I, I just yeah. think they haven't announced it yet. But yeah. I cannot, I cannot honestly imagine that they would put out a Thunderbolts movie and not use him and that character in some capacity within the story itself. You know, I, it makes um, complete sense because the way they've set him up here in the MCU is having a kind of higher cause. You know, having an agenda per se. He's not a villain per se, is he? You know, he's a guy yeah, who's yeah. actually trying to achieve something. So yeah, and I, that's what I mean. I, I that's the course I tried to take with Zemo. I worked, <laughs> I worked a lot on Zemo. I, I've written more Helmet Zemo than anyone else on the planet. Um, and and I really liked evolving him from from thinking that he he should rule the world to, to to believing there's a reason why he should rule the world and that is because the world needs someone better 
running it and he was better <laughs> he's a he's a supremacist he thinks he's better and and but at least my Zemo was trying was trying to be better for a better cause in a way as twisted as it was you know and I, that's the that's the economy of the character that I love so much is that yes he wants to rule the world but it's for your own good <laughs> you know, like, and you should let him because he's better than you you know <laughs> that's great Mate. That, that's fantastic. I love hearing you talk about uh, Helmut Zemo. T true, behind the scenes, like Sumner stories, when, at, all my life, ever since I was a kid, when I get uh, excited about a comic book concept, I start rubbing my hands together like this, right? <laughs> and I ca caught myself doing it when you were, when you were, in my old mate, Rizwan Chowdhury, who I worked with in publishing for many years, the first thing he, that he found out when he knew I worked in comic books, he was like, are you just rubbing your hands together all the time? And I was like, yeah, I am. But I found myself doing it underneath the camera shot here while you were, while you're talking about <laughs> that. It's fantastic, mate. Brilliant. You got, wow, you got to go off. It's, it's every Mike Myers, Austin Powers movie, <laughs> secret planning. Yeah. Right on. And for no better cause, I mean, mate, I'm so pleased that uh, your entire run has been, you know, placed into these high quality editions. And uh, I'm looking forward to Marvel sending your copies to you. And I'm looking forward to anybody, everybody else buying them from the links attached to our conversation. I can't wait till you interview me next. And I'm like just a desiccated, <laughs> fossilized skeleton. <laughs> and I still don't have my, my omnibus in my hand. <laughs> And on that note, mate, it's, it's always great to see you, Fabian. It's great to see you too, Andy. Thank you very much. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.